no rest for the weary. Today we tackle some of Minnesota's toughest and most remote fall terrain, but don't worry. Whoa. The payoff can be worth the effort. There is a very healthy population of birds here. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Pheasants Forever. Ely, Minnesota plays to the cliches. This is canoe country where the end of the road meets pure wilderness. This town gets kinda quiet in October, a season when Mother Nature can't quite make up her mind. Life is excellent. Yeah, I love it up here. It's, uh, couldn't be a better place to live. That's Don Beans, an Ely local, longtime canoe outfitter, and a guy with the notion. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of land, lots of grouse, woodcock. It's a good area. Most everyone gets Ely as Minnesota's gateway to the Boundary Water Canoe Area Wilderness. But a single bird species might change this town's reputation, at least for a day or two. The woods here are like nothing you have ever seen. The air is so sweet with the smell of pine and the fall colors, the leaves are just vivid. It is just a magical place to walk. Home base this trip, we shack up at Don Bean's Jasper Lake Lodging Company, specifically his Jasper Lake cabin. Cabin, <laughs> that might be an understatement. It's got that Northwoods appeal and people love it. So it's saplings, one to three inches. Oh yeah. That's Kevin Shepard. That looks really good. A professional forester with the American Bird Conservancy, a guy who happens to love to hunt grouse. It's pretty, actually pretty good cycle all the way down to here. We hope to hunt the boundary waters. More than one million wild acres on the border of Minnesota and Canada. All of it off limits to any sort of development. The only way to get around on foot or by canoe. Now, we want to paddle in, camp, and hunt. But fall forecasts have a funny way of quickly changing minds. We make the call to just stay at the cabin. North Woods Prudence. A nasty forecast of heavy wind and snow force us to keep the canoes on the rack. Instead, <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna get warm. Don pulls up his sleeves to show us undeveloped land right along the edge of the boundary waters. I think I'm gonna hunt uh, hawk first. Meet Hawk. Kevin likes to hunt English setters. Hawk is his seven-year-old, a dog full of energy, capable of finding birds away from hunters and constantly looking, they never give up. You know, they just keep going and going and going. Let's go play. Lead the way. We walk along Forgotten Logging Trail, a favorite haunt of Don's. That's the remains of the old Model T that used to take the boats from Jasper where the Fernberg Road ended. This looks, looks kind of grossy in here. The cold, wet wood should help hawks sniff up birds. Wish I could move like that through the woods. No kidding. He is so agile and light-footed on his feet, you know. It seems today. Oh, there he is. The first bird catches us off guard. The grouse sat down right there. Kind of like the weather forecast. I bet he crossed the road. He's right down here. 
just let the hawk work for a little bit. Whoa, whoa. Point. Yeah, he's on point. <laughs> See when he when his tail's wagging like that? That tells me the bird has moved on. So I'm just gonna let him let him hunt. Okay, grouse one, hunter zero. No problem. This wild hunt is just getting started. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition. Every shot counts. Waltons, everything but the meats. Aluma Trailers. Pike Gear. And by Nutrisource. Okay, Don, hunt him up. <laughs> Chasing grouse on the edge of Minnesota's boundary waters might be all about the highs, oh, bird, and the lows of off-grid hunting. It's rocky, it's full of ravines and balsam firs. It's, it's tough. Part-time grouse guide Kevin Shepard and I trudge alongside Don Beans, an Ely local who knows every crevice and every tree around these parts. A lot of public land, but the area being so thick with the north woods, there isn't a lot of trails. Use the trails to access the woods and the cut areas, and uh, then you gotta hike. Today, we hunt one of Don's favorite haunts. Well, this looks perfect. Yep, we're in grouse country now. An old logging cut from the early 2000s. You've got regrowth that's five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old. It is perfect habitat for birds. A lot of splash in here too. There are definitely birds here. There's a lot of de really decent habitat around here. These are not areas where you're gonna pull in and see three vehicles with hunters. There are just not people around. Whoa! He's on a woodcock. I almost bet he took those two steps there. The bird's right here. Get it up, Go. okay, okay. There is a very healthy population of birds here. They're just a little bit tougher to get to. Where is he? There it goes. Oh, coming toward across the road. Coming your way. Point, Bill. Their non-reaction is probably not a great sign. Whoa! Dead in there. Dead bird. Dead in there. Dead bird. Another one. Nice. <laughs> So that's a young of the year. This is a this is a young bird. That's a female as well. So we got two females here. Also, the bill on a female is longer than a male. Like that, two prized woodcock in hand. At least two others dodge our shots. Don's got his spots. So we've seen grouse, four woodcock. Realistically, that is a gem. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. It's it was good hunting there. And Don's best kept secret still hides ahead about 400 yards down the trail. I see it, yeah. Yeah, it's walking right in there. Too bad, it'll take us extra time to get there. These birds act like they've never seen people. He's walking away from you. So bizarre. The grouse just wander away and disappear. Oh, I heard one fly. Not a care in the world. PhD level bird grouse hunting, yeah. Even so, we hike down to Don's spot. Thing is, I only brought two life tanks. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever needed a canoe for a grouse hunt. Hot, get up, get up. 
Don's favorite part of the world is this little Jasper Creek area. And we've got a canoe stashed back in the bush to actually get across to get to stuff that literally has never been hunted. Hawk, sit still. Lockers cleared this area right around 2000. All right. The old bridge, long gone, but the regrowth all over. How cool is this? We cross the creek to get to Don's dream, really the beaver dams. You know, the beaver. The beavers make perfect ecosystems for rough grouse. And you find out where the beaver sloughs are, you find out where the beaver houses are. You make quick hunts. Beaver house grouse, it even has a good, nice ring to it. Yeah, I wanted to write a story about beaver house grouse. And uh, I've shot a lot of, back years ago when I trapped beaver, I've shot a lot of grouse uh, while I trapped beaver. We find the biggest of beaver huts. Now the question becomes, will we find the birds? This is kind of like the end of the trail, isn't it? Pretty much. Not quite sure where we go from here. The Flush is brought to you by Benelli, Carlson's Choke Tubes, The Shooter's Choice, Elk Mound Seed, Ruffland Kennels, and by Kansas Department of Wildlife Parks and Tourism. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Eely grouse. Whoa! Bird up. They're flying. Sure seem wild is this territory. You know, we're right on the edge of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. Um, a lot of forest here, Superior National Forest. A lot of public land. We find plenty of birds, but few play nice. No problem. Ely Canoe Outfitter Don Beans keeps a secret spot. Just a quick panel across Jasper Creek to an old logging cut not well known. Well, except to us. Rumor is not a lot of people hunt on this side. See anybody here. Up, up. And we don't walk 10 yards from the canoe, and guess what? He's looking like it's up there. If it's up there, I can't see it. He wins. There is a growl somewhere here. Point. Whoa. Point. Whoa! Whoa! All right, here we go. He's right here. We get off the canoe. Literally 20 yards in front, bird. God, how did he get away from me? I can't believe it. I can't believe he got away from me. Ah, <laughs> oh, unreal. <laughs> We're burning shells. <laughs> yep. Oh, Hope you fun. got some extra. I do. Birds are starting to fly. That's what, three grouse, five or six woodcock? Each time we hit a new spot, he's nervous, see him? Something good happens. No, I didn't have a shot. Yes, this is tougher territory, right? There's rock, it's the deep woods. There's something down there. But with dogs, it's not that difficult to hunt. Dead bird. What was that? Woodcock. Here, come here. That a boy. Good boy, boy. Wow. We worked hard for this little guy today. It was sure fun, though. I would do it all over again, just for this. This is rugged. It's tough. Very tough hunting. But that might be the lure of this rugged country. Undeveloped and seemingly untouched north and into Canada. 
Exactly why Don Beans promised himself long ago he'd live in Ely, a dream whipped up by a nine-year-old kid in Ohio. November 1972. We wanted to go, we wanted to get some candy, and my mom gave us each a dollar. Don still remembers the day he and his sister walked with a friend to the corner convenience store. Went by the magazine rack, and there was a, a magazine there, Outdoor Life. I saw it was the magazine was like 75 cents. He bought it and still had pennies left for a bag full of candy. And I was just thumbing through the magazine. It was uh, the story of Bob Carey, that uh, secret of the old Howard Mine. And, and I saw that log cabin and I'm like, wow, look at that. Bob Carey coveted Ely. The longtime outdoor writer and Northwoods icon penned a piece about the grouse woods. I knew back then, right when I read it, I'm going to come see this area. I was, you know, I'm at nine years old and just mesmerized me. As soon as I saved my money, I know. I bought a red Jeep, CJ5, packed up, and uh, I loaded up my Jeep and just took off and pulled into Ely on April 18th, 83. And Don never left. Who does that? A kid going to get candy and he ends up in Ely. That's a great story. It is the draw of these wild north woods, the reason Don built his Boundary Waters outfitting business, his guest cabins, and the coffee shop back in town. I wanted to have a lifestyle. It wasn't more of a career, it wasn't a job. I wanted to make a, a living and have my lifestyle be that. It's been a good life. Pheasants Forever's mission is to protect and restore wildlife habitat. Without habitat, we don't have wildlife and we don't have places to hunt. Without you, Pheasants Forever has one less voice in their fight for conservation. Join Pheasants Forever today to help us create healthy habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Sign up at this web address and you'll receive a one-year subscription to Pheasants Forever Journal plus this signature series Pheasants Forever Duffel Bag. Your $35 will make a difference today that will last forever. Fall gets to be lonely up north. In Minnesota's Boundary Waters region, the woods go silent. Quite a few people come up here in their cabins for the summer months, but after that fall color rush the, uh, from Labor Day on, they just disappear. Which means... It's gonna be great. We have the grouse covers to ourselves. Well, I think we're gonna use, use butch today. Butch is grouse guide Kevin Shepard's two-year-old English setter. The dog is young and plenty full of vinegar. Actually, both of Kevin's dogs like to cover a lot of ground. I like to him, him to find the birds. I hate to steer them. They're pretty amazing. I've never seen dogs cover ground like that and work. Ely Boundary Waters. Today's birds stump us. There goes. We find plenty of grouse, grouse, but this keeps happening. Whoa, is he up the tree? Something's just off, right? The dogs point him, but then the bird's gone. And then you see him walking over here. Point. Yep, he's right here. Oh, you got him? You ready? Up, up, here. Let's look in here. <laughs> watch him, watch him. Is he gonna, oh, there he goes right there, see it? Yep, where'd, where'd he go? Up? Oh, look at him, up. Got up and flew. And then the dog brings back a bird. No way. Did we shoot at a grouse here yesterday? I think we did right in here. Yeah. Yeah. We sure did. The grouse. Pays to follow up shots, huh? Even if it's the next day. <laughs> There's a lot going on all of a sudden. Wind, rain, snow, birds. And we notice 
No dog. Come on, Butch. Up, up. He's gone. Butch, up. So I'm not going to lie. Kevin's looking at his GPS. The dog is moving here. We're kind of headed this direction, and the dog is getting further and further and further away. <laughs> and in seconds, that dog is a quarter of a mile away. Come on. Nearly a half mile. Come on, Butch. But Kevin never really stressed out. He just kept tabs. He kept talking. Come on. You're OK. Come on. One of those heart-stopping moments that shakes any hunter. He'll be showing up here any second. Come on, Butch. There he is. Now he found you. Where have you been, huh? It's kind of scary up in this country. Come here. He's not going to just go to some farmer's house and hang out till you go get him. Well, now that that is over, we bug out and check out a completely different spot. Few people know it, but Ely has a pile of giant, and I mean giant, lumber cuts. This is a huge area of, of a forest that's managed really, really good for grouse and woodcock. Point, right here. Oh, up. Yep. We better save this hunt for another day. Tonight, we celebrate life in the North Woods. Here's to one of the toughest hunts of the fall. Yes. Yeah. No lack of birds, and it's real smart. <laughs> On this trip, they're tasty too. This must be a bomb. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You like that. What a couple of days with Don and Kevin. Ely, it might be Minnesota's canoe capital, but I'm thinking it might have a new title.